Hello everybody, I'm Simone. And I'm Isaac. We are two band members from Epica, a band from the Netherlands. We are currently in Milano promoting our latest record, Requiem for the Indifferent, and we hope we can answer all your questions. Thank you so much guys, welcome to Linear Rock and welcome back to Italy. Uh, so the new album, Requiem for the Indifferent, uh, is out March 9 uh, on Nuclear Blast and uh, comes uh, right after the successful record Design Your Universe, uh, which in a sense increased your fame, not only in Holland, but Europe, South America, and so on. Uh, did it cause any pressure uh, when you approach composition and recording this time, because, you know, having such uh, a huge record before this one? Mm -hmm. Hello, <laughs> well, pressure, you know, I don't know, not really, <laughs> well, you always want to do better than before, um, and you can only do your best, you know, it's, um, yeah, of course it's kind of scary to know that people call Design Your Universe a masterpiece, and yeah, yeah you have to make another one, <laughs> but basically, yeah, it's what we do, and it's the kind of music we make, and it's not really that we did anything really that much different. I mean, it's a logical step after Design a Universe, and so far we've heard very good stuff about it. So, um, yeah, pressure. No. No. Not, not really. Or a healthy pressure. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stimulating. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> um, a new arrangement uh, sound more complex on this new album and as uh, some songs as also uh, longer length um, compared I mean to the previous records um, did this record take uh, any longer also in recording was that also more complex to to do it or uh, or not not really it's uh, for this record we had basically the same uh, recording process as with design universe and uh, also a little bit the same time but uh, we do also have like a little bit of extra time where we can work on the songs in case we're not 100% satisfied yeah and that's basically with each record that uh, for example in the end of the process we are also arranging the orchestra a little bit differently and there we have to communicate well with uh, Miro what we want and he has to come up with ideas but all in all not much longer than last record, or maybe even shorter, I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. think but as far as guitars go, it was a little shorter, mm -hmm. because this time I recorded in the, in the studio and not at home. Yeah. So that means that I don't have to engineer everything myself. So okay. It's much faster and it basically it's more relaxed to do. And, um, but it's a very intense uh, project if you make an album, it's really... Let's yeah. say that we recorded what three three months in total, so it's uh, and that's without the writing. That's even longer. But yeah. just recording is three months, but there's lots of stuff going on. But if you have a good planning, then it's doable. So everything just came naturally. I mean, it wasn't a choice to have it, you know, more various and complex. It simply came like that. Yeah. yeah some songs were already written. Some, mm -hmm. <coughs> so. They were kind of, uh, we picked up on them and worked on them a little more. And some songs were completely new. But with each record, we have uh, more songs that are actually coming on the record. So we can make a selection. We can only pick out the best songs which okay. are going to be on the record as well. And how would you introduce the new record to the die hard Epica fans? You know, what they can expect from it? Uh, something new? Or uh, it's like. The trademark of Epica is still there. I mean, symphonic, that that gothic metal still fit. <laughs> you know, what do you that think? That gothic power <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're now, uh, we're now a hip hop metal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I think it, this is a logic. The, the next step. It still has everything what Ep Epica stands for. Yeah. Mixed in are always a couple of new, refreshing elements, and I think you can also mainly hear them in the songs with Isaac also wrote. They are quite renewing <laughs> yeah and also something which is different this time is that your, your vocal lines were introduced in the songs much uh, earlier in the process okay. and that means that basically we 
moved everything. I'm sorry, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm used to moving. He's rocking and rolling. Yeah. And um, so basically, we we uh, build everything around the voice more okay. than in the past. So okay. it's something you maybe don't really hear uh, if you haven't heard the whole, or if you weren't part of the whole process. But I think in the end, it really helped to make the vocals stand out, give them more air, more space, okay. and thus make them more catchy for the ear. So. And is there any particular meaning or concept behind the title you chose and uh, in the lyrics? Uh, uh, yeah, we always have a real message with each lyrics that we write. Um, we had one official real concept album that was The Divine Conspiracy. But there's always a red line going through each record where we have recurring topics. We always write about politics, about uh, nature, about religion, and we include actual topics. Like, for example, now you got the financial crisis, you got the yeah. Arabian Spring. We always have na uh, natural disasters. And then there are uh, people um, going crazy and shooting at people. Like, for example, this time it's Anders Breivik. But there are always people which try to, to ruin things for other people. So it's very, it's like topics we always are interested in mixed with actual topics and also some personal songs as well. Okay. And cover artwork looks uh, like a bit cyberpunk in a sense. Um, seems uh, to represent, you know, um, human being looking for the key, you know, for the salvation of the nature and uh, mother hurt. Um, that's the interpretation that we gave. Uh, I hope it's it fit. <laughs> and uh, uh, how did you come to that? And uh, how it is connected to the music and the lyrics? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, the artwork is a little bit my uh, my uh, Your cup field. of tea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Each each band member has his expertise, and I'm okay. Example. Mine is drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I worked with uh, Stefan Heilemann again. Mm -hmm. He did Design Universe and uh, Classical Conspiracy, and he has a great vision. He's a great artist, so we immediately wanted to give it a try with him again. He talked to Mark about the concept of the record, the idea behind it, and just started drawing. Mm -hmm. and we sat together, he showed me the drawings, and I picked out this one, which is the cover now. Okay. And uh, it's a little bit the, the, how do you say, the two extremes in life, the two outer ends. Like we have the materialistic side, yeah. the, the coldness, the machines, and then you have the, the pure side from, from nature and what was given to us originally. And the, the person on the photo is, is not human anymore, just got a number, it's like one out of many. And it's kind of st stuck, grown together with this um, a machine world and is indeed trying to find what find what's really important in life. And that's one, one of the things is, of course, Mother Nature, Mother Earth. <laughs> okay. Um, does he listen also to the music to get any inspiration to draw, you know, the cover artwork or is no, simply... He no, he didn't hear okay. anything. Uh, he just okay. asked, uh, he asked me uh, what the title was going to be like, what we had okay. envisioned ourselves. And we had to give per, uh, we sent him the lyrics and we had to also explain what the lyrics were about. Okay. But that was the only thing he basically doesn't... The only input you gave, okay. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't listen to the music and then gets the idea. He basically, he also doesn't need that. He's got like a zillion things in his head. So okay. always something good comes out. <laughs> Um, the title track and the closing song, uh, Serenade of Self-Destruction, um, are the longest tracks on the record and uh, seem in a sense to be the climax in it, you know, matching the perfect combination of gothic, heavy and symphonic metal. Um, which is also a kind of habit for Epica uh, that you had since the early days to have these long, very particular pieces. Um, which are the pros and cons about uh, creating such long and various pieces of music? And uh, do you consider that, in a sense, a trademark for Epica? Yeah, it sure is. Um, like. It's also something pretty natural. Epica's uh, influence has always been uh, film scores. Yeah. And you also see that lots of these songs are kind of long and, and 
they use the same theme and change the the atmosphere like yeah. you can have a very heavy part where the theme is coming and then very slow part intimate part with the same theme and you almost don't notice it so before you know it then you have like 10 minutes or something like that but yeah. basically the structure is pretty similar to a normal song but for instance the bridge is then really like technical and goes yeah. from left to right and up and down and um so yeah it's a pretty natural thing for Epica, trademark. It's also how Mark, for instance, is writing songs, and uh, and I think the two songs which you know, uh, which you just mentioned, yeah. are they both? It's like one is ending the first half of the album, and yeah. the other one is uh, ending the second half. So yeah. it's like indeed like a sort of climax twice in the album. So you have a good flow in the, right. in the album. So yeah, you're right. Uh, you recorded again at the Gate Studios in uh, Wolfsburg with Sasha Peit. Um, been a, mo a more complex uh, record, as we already mentioned. Uh, uh, did it take also a longer time in the studio, not only composing the songs? And uh, is Sasha? Uh, was I an, an input uh, also in arrangements or uh, we, we, I mean is he only the producer or he did uh, he added something to your sound during well, the working process uh, he definitely helps uh, mm -hmm. we always go to the studio to do pre-production before we actually start recording so we we put on this, all the songs on the table all the vocal lines and uh, we work with them on making the songs perfect and making the right selection wh which songs are going to be on the record okay. and that we, we do that a couple of months before we actually start recording so after that we still have some times to work on the songs and Sasha is great because when he has never heard the music he can then listen with fresh ears when you're writing an album for two years you're stuck sometimes you're like you can't hear it anymore and you don't know what it still needs for it to be become as perfect as it can be. Yeah. So uh, Sasha is not only producer, but he does help uh, improve uh, certain song structures, and here and there also some vocal lines as well. Or if you, for instance, uh, let's say that within the band you're not always agreeing on everything the other says, so okay. then he's a very, let's say, uh, objective uh, judge. Yeah, <laughs> judge. He's the judge. Judge Sasha. <laughs> so he, the referee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, then it's like, because you also have to, it's a sort of trust you, you need to have, you know. If, if, you, if you're doubting yourself, like, should we do this or that or whatever, then just ask him and then he can just have a professional and good yeah. ear on that and, and, and he just gives his opinion. Which yeah, doesn't mean that it's going to be like that, but okay. at least it's an extra, uh, yeah, a sort of extra input yeah. which you can... Uh, he's, he's definitely, you know big he's famous yeah. and uh he i mean his work speaks for him is uh, is there any suggestion that he gave to epica which he, you consider the smartest you know something that really helped the band hmm. no, no. i think it's just the whole process that he was there with us from the beginning okay he saw the band grow and he he always like his success was a little bit the judge the the objective judge which could uh, see everything happen and could guide us a little bit wherever we needed to yeah. since he's got huge expertise he's he's got so, so many years that he's been working with successful bands and he's also part of that success and that's why we always also go back to the studio because we know when we go there we have a good end result yeah and the good thing about him is also the you know the combination because everything he works on uh, he gives space, you know, to the talent and creativity, you know, everything is great, but has his own trademark. So it's like he's, he's giving, you know, he's, a, he's giving his imprinting, but he, he leaves also, you know, artists to have their yeah. own personality. So yeah, that's, exactly. that's yeah. great. But sometimes he also, if he doesn't like something, we really like it, then he just lets us be. Yeah. yeah. He can have a totally different opinion, but it is up to us in the end if okay. we take his, his advice, because we sometimes argue about stuff which is a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. And there we win in the end, because it's our band, of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, <laughs> like, this time, like, production-wise, or, like, sound-wise, uh, these days you have all these bands who 
they totally compress the whole thing so everything is on the same yeah. uh, level basically and if like you, a block <laughs> yeah it's a block a wall of sound and, and uh, you know there's quite a lot of pr producers nowadays who work like that yeah. uh, and he's doing that also differently and that's something like we we as a band don't really have any expertise in that but then you, you also trust him and, mm. and that means that every everything on the album has its own space like you say and not only the genre but yes. also every individual and, and in the band um, he can give that a, a sort of space in, yeah. in the music so yeah that's also a very good thing a question for Simon um, your singing style through the years um, reached a higher pitch you know every time more uh, and various tones also and multicolored style uh, on uh, Requiem for the Indifferent uh, you're showing a top-notch versatility um, how did you did your love and passion for singing very first started and do you think I mean do, do you perceive yourself that you've grown a lot in the last 10 years yeah uh, I'm, I'm happy that I've grown a lot because <laughs> Uh, back uh, at the first record, uh, I was only 17. Not many life experience, not many <laughs> vocal experience. And uh, many years later, with singing teachers, many live shows, mm -hmm. uh, lots of life experience, because you grow up fast when, when you're in a band. And uh, I like to, with each record, set the standard a little higher. I really want to change every record. And, that I feel good about my singing. And the first two records, I uh, I did the best I could back then, but I can do much better now, which makes it difficult for me to listen to the vocals back then. I would like to re-record those records. <laughs> but then it would lose its charm again, because that's just how it was back then. And not only my singing changed, but also our, our music a little bit, due to the fact that we change our style personally a little bit, but also we have to great new band members which are also involved and um, create again a, a better epica and I think it's important to improve as a musician, as an entertainer, as a band composing together and uh, I think I succeeded. <laughs> and which do you consider your main influences as a singer? Uh, Actually, not no one specific any okay. anymore. Everybody's always referring back to Taria, but that was when I was 16, 17. Okay. Uh, I'm still a fan of of the early Nightwish. I really like. Uh, they just yeah, that's something special for me. I will always like it. I'm not listening to metal nonstop every day, but it's just something you have special. You hold special memories to. And nowadays, I. Uh, I also listen to pop singers as well, oh. so you can also hear that a little bit in the record. I still, my heart lies with more the classical music, and I also, I'm going to search for uh, another teacher because I moved to the south of Germany. I okay. don't live close to my teachers anymore, and uh, I'd like to invest more time in that, but also sing and uh, sing every style I can, I possibly can. I'm and when you mention pop singers, that includes also Lady Gaga. Yeah, as as crazy as it sounds, I think she is a great singer. But she's a, she's a little crazy, but so am I. But I don't wear <laughs> I don't wear a dress made out of meat to show it. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think that the collaborations as a special guest uh, with Fla Prime of Fear or uh, Camelot, for example, uh, refined your style in a sense or helped in a sense your, yourself? Yeah, uh, with with each other band I work with outside of Epica, you see how different it can be and they also they want to hear the typical Simone sound but they also just push you a little bit like ah, the song is the songs are different so I'm I'm a little bit out of your comfort zone and then you just try and by accident with with uh, poetry for the poison I I belted out a huge high note which was a mistake and I didn't know I actually could do that so I, we were all a little bit like wow what just came out of <laughs> what came out of that little body so uh, I uh, I wanted to work on that a little bit more, and I'd like to surprise people with each record. Good. Um, do you consider uh, Within Temptation like more partners in crime, since you're both Dutch bands, uh, or a main influence since they came before Epica? Uh, they're definitely not an influence okay. on, on our style. Mm -hmm. I, I really like Nightwish, I like the beginning, 
years of Nitrous and I like how they are now, but they are not a metal band. Okay. They, I don't consider them All right. a band. She was talking about Within Temptation. Huh? The question was about Within Temptation. Yeah, and yeah, yes. And now you say Nightwish. <laughs> Did I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, just to, Thank just you. to be sure. <laughs> I've done 10,000 uh, billion interviews lately, so I, I kind of <laughs> forgot my own name. Okay, <laughs> cut. <laughs> We're talking about Within Temptation. Okay. But you still, you also, everybody has like the old and the new Nightwish because of the singer. So yes, I got sure. that question many times. Excuse me, everybody. But, uh, <laughs> but no. is there any competition no. between you and Sharon? Not at all. No. Do you know each other? Or yeah. Yeah. But she's not a friend, like for example, Christina or Elise okay. or Floor or. I also think it's like really that more than with Nightwish that, that they are doing something really different nowadays. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, but I like it, nevertheless. Yeah, but. I like the record. The new one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> so, so for me, it's a <laughs> A question for you, Isaac. Uh, you're a member of Epica since 2009, and uh, since the very beginning, you contributed to the songwriting very actively. Uh, what particular ingredient uh, do you think you added to the sound of Epica? Sexiness. No. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, <laughs> besides sexiness. I, <laughs> Um, no, I I think mainly that that I um, made the guitars um, more part of the melodic part, melodic side of Epica. So that means that I just made them more basically technical because then you also create melody in the guitars. Whereas in the past it was more to back up the orchestra, so the guitars were more rhythmic and. Um, so yeah, that would be the main change, I think, also with the solos, obviously. That's the most obvious obvious thing you can hear, but earlier today I had a, a guy saying, yeah, um, some people say that you, um, how did he say that? Um, that since you, since I joined the band, that the, the um, that it's less orchestration and, and more guitars and, or, okay. yeah, more brutal. Yeah. And then I said, no, because... <laughs> Because if you make the guitars a little more uh, melodic, then you need less of the orchestra to to make it more yeah, melodic. Yeah. So it's, uh, in my eyes, a better balance. Uh, you'll be playing Milano at the Alcatraz on uh, April 17th, 2012. Uh, why anybody listening now, viewing this interview, should not miss the show? And uh, will you have any opening act? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because it's it, it, you know they didn't announce it yet, so that's yeah, why well, I'm asking. Yeah, well, there's, <laughs> there's a reason okay. for that. Okay. All so. right. <laughs> um, yeah, still working on that. And why should they come? Tell them. Because you're sexy. <laughs> 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 no, I mean for the girls, they have they have five good-looking guys to, mm. to look at, and I'll I'll do my best to be sexy as well, but. Um, I just think that the energy we have, the, the music on record sounds great, but lots of people will say that live it really is like ten times better even, and it's a great experience to to see us live. And yeah, we're we're having a good time. We we try to have like a nice professional show, but it's not too stiff. You know, we we are still very spontaneous. We have a great energy, and we do our best to play our best to play the songs the way they are in the record but there are some surprises sometimes live <laughs> but that's live music yeah. but uh, it's that's open. how we like it yeah we're not perfect <laughs> and also we're um, yeah uh, we're working on a bigger production so okay. the artwork is integrated in the show more than only having a backdrop and, and yeah, yeah. you know so uh, yeah we're really working on that so the whole experience should be a little more interesting yeah. Um, yeah, and that's why they should. And the setlist will spread the whole career, or yeah. will be more on the new record. You no, know, obviously we're we're gonna be here to promote the album, okay. so we're gonna play songs of the new album, of course, but uh, but also older songs from every album. So if they wanna hear the, the whole record in full, they should come to uh, to yeah. Holland. We will play okay. CD as it is. Then uh, we cannot play all the songs. Live because we got a couple of classics which fans also want to hear, 
So after the we've done the city presentation, which will be the 16th of March and yeah. zero 13 October, mm -hmm. we can then feel which songs are great to play live and okay. which are more like record songs. So, so that would be a kind of test. Yeah. yeah. So? Oh, yeah. Okay. And the opening band is not decided yet, so you're you're not uh, you cannot tell. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's top okay. secret. Next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> any chance or any idea to bring on tour the Mayan project? Sometimes, did you ever think about it? We thought about it, but uh, you know, if you go on tour, it's not the, f the most easy. Uh, some people think, oh, party time, or yeah. you know, you're. Uh, you're in a band and it's always <laughs> fun, but it's pretty hard work. Also, now we have the VIP system, which is uh, sold out in, in Italy yeah. already. Um, so it's pretty stressy. The bigger you get, the more things you have to do. Um, so we thought about having Maya on, on the tour, but then it would be too much if you have to perform twice. And, uh, sound check. Yeah, sound check. Also a little the magic of the... Okay. Headliner, which which would be a little gone, and also I think the fans of the band are kind of uh, there's a similar fan base, so it would make more sense in my eyes to go with a total different band on tour with Maya. Mm. So 2012 marks the 10th anniversary of Pe of Epica. Um, do you have anything in mind to sort of celebrate it properly? We were gonna have a party, but when? Where that's also our priority lies now with uh, the European tours. Okay. But of course, for a band to exist 10 years, to be still successful, is something special which we want to share with the fans and party hardy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how would you describe this fantastic journey of the last 10 years? And uh, where will it bring you in the near future? And how do you imagine yourself in 10 years now? Yeah, I don't know. Ten years, I'll be 37, so <laughs> <laughs> then uh, I'll probably Four. already have children, but I'll still be in the music scene because it's just a, it's not a job which you can switch. It's a lifestyle and it's a part of you. So if it won't be in the metal scene, I'll still be doing something within the music scene or creative. But let's hope that in 10 years we can celebrate uh, the 20th year anniversary of Epica. That would be, yeah, yeah. still 10 years to come. I, I don't want to think too far ahead. <laughs> now I'm living now, I want to enjoy The sexiness moment. will be gone then. No, <laughs> <laughs> we'll all be old and wrinkly. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. Sean Connery is still sexy. So. <laughs> yes. No. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Guys <laughs> <laughs> And George Clooney, yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> right. Well, he's not that old yet. Sean Connery is almost yes. 80, and uh, right. Clooney is middle 40 or end 40. How old do you know? Me? <laughs> Still 21. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> Plus nine. <laughs> okay, not thinking too far. I know you have more interviews to do today in Italy, and you have any. I know you have plans for shopping, so you love also. Okay, you, Simon. <laughs> okay. He has okay. to come with So you like, I mean, to shop in, in Italy? Is something that... Uh, I've never actually really done it. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, there are always the cities I like to go shopping, like America is also, like Valhalla, it's, it's affordable because of the dollar. But, uh, I mean, Italy is a country of fashion and I've become more interested in fashion as well. So we're going to stop by... Uh, shop later on. Okay. Only for a little bit. Okay. Got to work as well. <laughs> 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 well, I understand her. I'm with her completely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, do you want to leave any message to the Italian fans? Thanks for watching and listening. And uh, we hope to see all of you in the show. And I hope that every one of you likes the album. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. that's about it. I yeah. guess. Yeah, we worked two years very hard for this record and we hope that everybody can find something that they like on this record and will experience the songs live and come hang out with us. So go buy it because it's worth. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you so much.